friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said you're doing great. This is gonna be a weird video. This is a video I actually never thought that I would make, but um, the more I thought about it, I really thought maybe I should. Now, <laughs> after Ric Flair's last match weekend, um, all of a sudden I started getting, not a lot, but I probably got like five or six messages on my channel saying, Kevin Nash put out a new podcast and he's pissed off at you. He thinks that you were very disrespectful by going to Scott Hall's grave and showing where he was buried. So I thought about it and at first I thought, you know, I, I know I, I personally didn't feel like I did anything wrong. So I wasn't going to, you know, make a big deal about it or anything. But then I started thinking, you know, um, this uh, people that don't watch my channel may not know why I'm doing what I do. So I figured, you know, if the possibility that Kevin or any of Scott's friends that might have been upset that I made that video were to see this video, I should explain it. So um, basically, you know, I used to live in Los Angeles and I found out about YouTube through a casting director. She actually said, you should make YouTube videos. You should go whatever you're interested in, you should go off and do those videos and make those videos and see what happens because I like your personality. So being that I lived in Los Angeles, I was doing all of the things that I was interested in, which was uh, old band houses from like the 60s and 70s in Laurel Canyon. And I was doing silent movie locations and homes of old 30s actors and I was going to grave sites and I was telling stories and the reason that I did that was because uh, growing up my grandfather who's still with us and he's on this channel pretty often he used to take me to cemeteries all the time and we would take walks and talk together and everything and he seemed to always know a story about somebody buried in that cemetery so uh, going to cemeteries has just always been a part of my life I know it's not uh, everybody's thing but it but it's just one of those things that I've always done and when I continued doing this channel and was able to start traveling, one of the things that I, you know, kind of always envisioned for this channel, oddly enough, was I wanted to be somewhere between Anthony Bourdain and Mr. Rogers. I love the idea of taking people on a field trip with you, but not making it all centered around you. It was actually like we were going somewhere and seeing something together. And so when I was able to start traveling, that's what I started doing was going and seeing only the places that I was interested in. Um, I do not go vlog or see anything that I'm not interested in. And a lot of people that watch YouTubers that do what I do get really angry that I say bluntly when I'm not interested in something. So I only do stuff that I'm passionate about. And there's probably no greater art form, whether people want to agree with me or not, than professional wrestling. I, and I've said this in numerous videos that I think that Professional wrestlers are the best one-take actors. They have to be in character, in and off the screen or in the ring. When they're out living their life, they still have to be in character. It's very physical. They have to create a character. I mean, you're basically a superhero come to life doing superhero things with your body. And a lot of people end up having you know, hard lives, they get into odd things. And part of, I think, what makes us all unify as people is that we all know we are going to die. Um, and sometimes hearing about someone who lived an extraordinary life and how they lived it and that they too have passed on, um, I think that's just something that we all connect with. And so when I go and visit a grave of someone, and we've went to a lot of Graves of Wrestlers, we went to Rick Rude, um, Kurt Henning, Harley Race, Kamala, James Harris, we've been to Eddie Guerrero's, we've been not only to those places, but we also have been to where the first Nitro was filmed, and where the last Nitro was filmed, and where Grandma Bees was, where the Road Warriors worked as bouncers, and we've been to the church where Ravishing Rick Rude learned to wrestle. I mean, it's not just about going to graves. It's not, for me, doing this channel is not about the money at all, and I think people that have been watching me for six years know that. I do things that I have a major appreciation for, and I just want to share the places that I'm able to go to that other people can't with you guys. And in a lot of cases, since people started watching me and they really loved the old Hollywood, 
they weren't necessarily into the wrestling or they didn't know about it. And so through these videos, I see it all the time, people commenting that now they're into learning about the wrestlers that I grew up with because of watching these videos, as well as people, and especially on the, the video that I made at Scott Hall's grave, a lot of people that will never ever be able to travel there and go pay their respects to Scott, it meant something to them. And that's really why I do it. I, I mean, going to graves is probably a tenth of the things that we do on this channel. And, and I do all the things, like I said, things that I enjoy doing, things that I love, and people that are inspiring. I don't go visit people that just have a negative story. I, I, I like to tell people stories that have a story of redemption in some way if they had a, a rough life or whatever. And I didn't feel that um, with the video that I made about Scott Hall that I, I, that I was disrespectful in any way. Now, I guess I can understand maybe um, not liking that I showed where he's buried, but that was public information. Um, it's it's right on the findagrave.com website, and uh, Cody had posted the picture of of all of Scott's friends at the the grave site when they had the ceremony. I, I, to me, I just thought, well, if it was posted like that, it's I didn't think that that was a private thing. And people for a couple of months, I think it had been two or three months since Scott had passed, have been saying, can you please go out and visit Scott Hall? I'm not able to travel or people that had disabilities or lived in the UK were like, please, can you go visit Scott Hall? NWO was huge to me. And honestly, I grew up with that too. I was a sophomore when the NWO night happened, when it like all went down. So I was total kayfabe too. Like I didn't know that it wasn't that what it all was. You know, I, I, I will never say that wrestling isn't real because it is so real. Um, but th that was an idea that I just, I didn't know that to me was like real. That was real life. So the fact that these guys, you know, Diamond Dallas Page, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, the fact that you guys were this good and made people care so much is a testament to how good you are. And, you know, to me, it's like, I had seen so many interviews with people other than Scott about Scott, interviews with Scott from his documentary. Um, and one thing that he said that stuck out to me was that he said, what do you do when there's no, no one cheering for you anymore, when there's no pop? And to me, I always think of, my friend Scott Michaels always has like a saying where he says, they, they, like they say you die two times, once when your soul leaves your body and the second time, when the last person says your name for the last time, like the last person that's alive remembers you. So for, for me, this was just a way of keeping Scott's memory alive. Um, when I went to the office to ask questions, they were more than happy to tell me more than I was asking because they said, and I remember her saying specifically, nothing I'm telling you was, is not public information because they wrote an article about this in the local paper. So um, I apologize if if Kevin was offended, it was not meant to be offensive to Kevin or anyone else that's a friend with, of Scott's or who was there in that photo, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Waltman, Diamond Dallas Page, uh, Triple H, Cody Hall, any of those people. I, you know, I, um, I had just been at Ric Flair weekend and Kevin Nash was there and, and I actually put, you know, I walked right up beside his booth and put a snippet of him in there you know, I had no idea at that moment. He probably had already filmed that podcast saying how upset he was with me. How awkward would that have been if I would have been in his line? But I was, I did actually go to Diamond Dallas Page's line and now it's got me thinking, you know, I want, you know, if, if Kevin Nash saw the video, I assume that Diamond Dallas Page saw the video and I, you know, I'm sure he probably recognized me when I went up there. I don't want any of these, anybody that I looked up to, to think that, um, that this was in any way to slight them or to be disrespectful to them. This was 100% immemorial. And, and the fact that I'm able to go and see these places, I know, like I said, it may not be something that, that everybody does and that everybody's into, but um, it is something that a lot of people do. And, and I put um, my heart into doing that video because I cared so much. There's so many, you know, especially in the wrestling business, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, want to like laugh it off because there were so many gimmicks. But to me, I, like I said, that was just like one of the beautiful things about it. And 
things like StarCast Weekend where you can go meet these guys. You know, people would see my videos and some of them would say, oh, that's so cool, you got to go meet Lex Luger and Diamond Dallas Page. And then some people would see some of the other people I met and they'd say, oh, that was a bummer. He looked like he didn't even care. And I'd say, it wasn't about that. Like, I wasn't there trying to buy a, a best friend. I was there thanking them for all the years of entertainment that they got and all the years that I hung out at the comedy store and was friends with, with everybody there. One of the things we all had in common was that they didn't look up to stand-up comedians as much. They looked up to wrestlers because the promos were what they found humor in and we would all do promos together. And just, you know, this doesn't make me any less of a, of a mark, but um, during those days, I, I was friends with Roddy Piper, and I had numerous nights, um, long nights talking, heart to heart with Roddy. And Roddy was like almost like a father figure in a way. He would he loved to ask you what you were up to, how you were feeling, how life was treating you, and he always would relate it to something in his life. And um, he told me a lot of those stories. He told me like this, how bad, how how poor he was on the road starting out and how Mad Dog Vashon would take him around and they would, they would pull ribs in restaurants making it look like that Mad Dog was having a heart attack so they could get out of paying the bill. And he told me about how he would be arrested and wrestlers would have to come and make up stories to get him out. And it's just like, I, I heard all these stories. So I take what you guys do and what you did as something serious and, and I don't mock it. So I, I feel like in this case, you know, there's a good chance Kevin Nash will not care about anything that I said. But in this particular instance, I feel like sometimes explaining your intent goes a little bit. And, and to be perfectly honest, like I said, I, um, I, I enjoy doing this. I enjoy getting to live my life very freely. And the last thing I want to do is make enemies with people that that I enjoy what they do. And especially when I'm going to be out and about trying to promote what they do, um, I, I certainly don't I don't want anybody to feel like that there should be a problem. And uh, and you know if, if Kevin's still upset with me after this, I apologize. I just know you know a year from now. There's going to be five or six videos that people that that are in it just to make money will have made a video from Scott's grave, and it's not that I wanted to be first, but I, I wanted to do something that meant something. I wanted it to. I wanted people to feel moved when they were done because he had a moving life, and uh, and I'm sorry if you felt like uh, you, that you and you and Scott would like to come stop me for for making that video. I apologize for that, and um, and being that that Conrad Thompson has been so good to me in um, a couple of instances where he didn't have to help me. Um, it served him no purpose to help me and he did help me and went out of his way to help me. Being that Kevin Nash's podcast is with his network, I just thought, you know, I should respectfully explain why I made that video because, you know, occasionally once a week or, or maybe twice a week I get somebody says, Kevin, I just heard Kevin Nash's podcast and he is pissed at you. I know you just can't make everybody happy, and uh, and and gosh, you know if um, I, I you know I can't hit up Kevin Nash every time I want to go visit somebody's grave and ask if that's okay. I mean, I, I if I, I you know in in some instances I look at it like, well, is going to Elvis's grave okay at Graceland? Is you know when I went to Babe Ruth's grave, it was piled with baseballs that people had left there, and as far as you know, disrespecting someone that I didn't know. Um, I didn't know Andre the Giant either, and I reached out to Jackie, Andre's best friend. I, you know, I assume was one of his best friends because he named his ranch AFJ, Andre, Frenchie, and Jackie. So when I met up with Jackie and I contacted her and said, could I make a video with you and find out about what Andre was like, the way that you knew him, and maybe go see where you guys scattered his ashes? She said, absolutely, because I want people to love Andre the way that I loved Andre. And whatever I can do to make that, that I owe that to him. So for you know everyone that may be upset for me going and making videos at Graves, it, it you know, it's, it, like I said, it's just one of those things that it makes it real. We will all be in that situation someday. And sometimes that's a way that people connect and people go off and, and explore more of Kurt Henning's history or Ultimate Warrior's history after we went to where his gym was and saw that his name is still carved in the concrete there on the sidewalk. It's just, 
it's uh, it's giving something to the fans that can't get there. So I hope that this was um, a fair explanation and that anybody that was close to Scott that may have been upset by that video, I hope at least this will help you understand that it was, it was mainly just to pay tribute to him and for fans that will not be able to get to ever visit there. And, and I was going, you know, I happened to be traveling in that general direction and I just thought, you know, I, I want to go see the bad guy. I, you know, I just did. So I apologize if, uh, if that upset anybody, but thank you all for watching. I hope uh, the history of great wrestling and the future that I kind of see coming with other promotions and the new reigns of WWE, I think it's going to be something cool. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye.